Hi everyone and welcome back for our final video in this series on the Unreal Engine Mannequin animation options. In this video we're going to be looking at the Unreal Engine control rig, so allowing you to stay inside the engine. So let's dive in. Okay, so hi everyone and welcome back. You can probably now hear my fan on my computer going crazy. That is because I have opened up Unreal Engine. So <clears throat> I'm just going to come into my scene a little bit more and we'll just, yeah there, there. there we go so not a lot of people know this well i mean most people already know this but in unreal engine 5.1 you can now animate it's um they've done a really good job with this um i've been screaming to the hills how impressed i am by their setup now one of the things that you do need is you will need the start content of the mannequin uh, in there along with its IK setup um, which is in rigs and then you've got CR mannequin body um, control rig mannequin body I'm just going to drag and drop that in our scene and you can see that, that automatically opened up the sequencer for me it can get a little bit messy in here, so I like to just throw the sequencer onto this tab so it's a bit more like animating in something I'm used to. And I'm just going to come around. Um, not a lot of people know this, but... Um, well, I, I say a lot, a lot of people know this. Pro you probably do know this if you work in Unreal Engine a lot. Um, but there are tools in here that are very similar to tools in other programs. Um, so let's have a look. So if we just go through the rig, so the arms come in. If I just select here, I've got it in FK at the moment. So I can, if I just grab, um, I'm just trying to remember where it is. So actually, now I'll walk you through the interface a little bit more. Um, so if you're used to animating in something like Maya, I mean, even in Blender, you've got your outliner here on the right hand side. This is where you can go through all the controls. This is one of the things that lots of Maya animators like myself are really impressed by because we're like, hey, it's just like Maya. That's miles better. Um, so it makes life a lot easier for us. You've got over here, you've got uh, the animation details, which would be much like your channel editor or your information panel in Blender. And then you've got some more details and uh, I don't really know what this one's for, why it's there. <clears throat> So that's kind of the interface. And then you've got over here on the left hand side, you've got your animation tool set. And this is where you've got all your extras. I mean, this has just improved so much that, um, yeah, when I first found out about this, I literally had to jump on a call with a guy and shout at him about it for an hour about how amazing it was. And I was so tired from it. I fell asleep afterwards. Um, <clears throat> Because this is just, it's just so impressive what they've done with Unreal Engine now. Um, so yeah, so I can literally, I mean, I've got grid snapping on at the moment. Let's turn that off and let's turn all of this crap off because um, we just want to be able to freely move this like we would in any other scene. So, so yeah, I can uh, I can move the leg in IK. So um, I can animate it like that. And then one of the things, you have to kind of remember about Blender as well. So <clears throat> it's a little bit like, uh, not Blender, sorry. It's a little bit like Blender in that you've got this sequencer here where you have your keys show up. But again, we have still got the graph editor, which is um, another pop-up window. <clears throat> it can be a little bit messy, but there are buttons to try and make things more easy. So you have to go through and like, uh, really control like what you're looking at. So you've got absolute view, stack view, normalized view, like we'd have in Maya. I mean, that is available also in Blender. You've got zoom to fit. Um, you've got uh, focuses on the curve selection. Um, and you've got all tangents or selected t keys um, or no tangents. And then you've got um, auto frame curves, snaps. Like the, the, there is a lot of options in here to go through. We're going to go through them more um, because I will be doing some tutorials on how to, on animating some things inside Unreal Engine and as well as doing ones for Blender as well. 
because we want to kind of cover both bases. So those who want to stay in Blender, those who want to st uh, work solely in Unreal Engine, um, yeah, this is what we're going to be doing. Um, but yeah, so there's so the graph editor is very much like what you'd find in in both Maya and Blender. Um, you've got uh, snapping tools um, over here. So you've got the Pose Master. So this is so in in Maya the equivalent would be Studio Library. In Blender the equivalent is the Pose. Uh, library um, and you've got this now in Unreal Engine as well which is amazing to see that actually they're including that. You've got uh, a tween machine for creating in between keys, um, you've got a snapper to snap parent to child and stuff like that um, which is great as well because you can actually do it over a set number of frames rather than having to be constant. Um, there's lots, lots of control, you've got a motion trail tool on here as well so like um, let me just set some keys on here just so um, let's just go add keys and then go along a bit and then rotate this. And like that. And just add another key. Um, there we go. So we've got that there. We can go to just to show you the tween, tween key, but then I want it more here, so we can control the motion like that. Um, yeah, tween key, amazing. It's actually <laughs> inside Unreal Engine. Um, and then we've got, what else have we got? Uh, you've got all these other options over here. So you've got space switches, so you can switch between parent and world. Like on the spine, this is really useful because you can, um, so for example, on the head, if I go to switch that to world space, if I now rotate the chest, you can see how the head stays where it should be. It's just, yeah, um, proper fanboying out over this stuff. Uh, let's just go to switch between IK and FK. So if we grab, uh, that's a shoulder control. Yeah, I see it just works. Um, where is my FK IK switch? Oh, you can also build constraints as well. So I could also constrain a box. Like if we, uh, we I'm just going to bring this over to him. Um, let's snap him to that. Uh, no, I just want to move him over. So select, that's the child. And we'll say that's the parent. And then if I move that around. I'm not doing it now. Uh, I can just snap to there. And that just snaps its position. Play around with these things. Um, yeah, let's ignore that. Uh, what else? We want to find our FK IK switch. Ah, there we go. FK IK switch next spine leg arm arm FK IK switch switch to IK. Ah, oh, look at that! And the IK arm is in the right place. There we go. Wee. Like this is just yeah, everything you need to animate. It's all in Unreal Engine, so you never need to leave Unreal Engine. I wonder why they did that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so this is your third option. No, not your third option. This is like the fifth one I've gone through. I can't even remember now. Um, but yeah, so this is the one of the other options that's completely free. Um, but there's another other added benefit to this. If you animate on the Unreal Engine 5 character in Unreal Engine, you can transfer your animations onto the Unreal Engine 4 mannequin as well. And it generally causes a lot less problems. So, <laughs> um, so in some aspects, if you're working just with the mannequins, it might be better just to stay in Unreal Engine. Um, because we can also apply these animations we were doing here onto the third person character, no, the first person character as well. So it's just the arms. Um, so we will be looking at that in another video tutorial of going through how to animate uh, hand animations for gunshots and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the the uh, it's very 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 impressive um, how much this is actually capable of now. The only problem with Unreal Engine now is just the fact that if you want to animate in it solely like this, 
Um, you, know, you can hear my fan. It's going constantly on my computer. <laughs> yes, so really good stuff. Um, like If I turn up the scale as well, you can scale up the, uh, the gizmo or down the gizmo in the screen to make it easier to work with. You can uh, sw switch between local space and global space. So if I go to um, rotations, for example, I can switch that to, if I rotate this round like this, uh, no, which one is it? Oh. oh, there we go. It's that button there. Sorry, I knew it was one of those buttons. I was going around in circles, going, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, but yeah, so that's how you switch to orientation and world, which is great again. Um, yeah, just all around greatness. Um, so yeah, so that's animating Unreal Engine. Um, have a play around with it. There's a lot to play with on this rig. Like there's even a foot roll. Um, if I scroll down and go to our foot, so you've got. If I rotate this, oh look at that foot peel! Oh, look at that. That's exactly what you want to see. Um, and then you've got heel pivot as well. Well, it's the foot control, and then you've got toe roll. You've also got this other one down here as well, which is toe pivot. Yeah, just phenomenal um, what they've done. The last missing piece, however, is getting pathing tools in here for if you were animating for a film uh, with a quadruped. Now, yeah, quadrupeds are a bit of a beast. Um, we might cover them in the future. We'll see. Um, it depends what kind of quadruped we can find to use. Um, but yeah, so that about covers it. So that's me gushing over Unreal Engine's animation side of things. And that was the Unreal Engine control rig on our mannequin character. Now, just to summarize everything we've been through in this video series, we had the Mr. Mannequin tools, the x kit, the UFE tool kit, and then finally the Unreal Engine control rig. Now, I won't say to anyone you should be using one over the other. Everyone's going to have their own preference on this. The one thing I will stress is please do try them all out because you might find that you like one that you didn't realize you would. Now, moving forwards from this into the next series, we're now going to start looking at animating the actual mannequin character and applying our animations back onto the rig inside Unreal Engine. We're not going to stay just in Blender for this though, so I will be doing a video series on animating it in Blender and a video series on animating Unreal Engine. And this is purely just to mix it up so there's lots of options for people. So, if you'd like to see the rest of this video series now, make sure that you subscribe to the Patreon where you have exclusive access to videos before anyone else, plus any assets for this project. A massive thank you to our subscribers and we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.